Hey everybody, Jim here. Today I want to do a comparison review, a shootout if you will, on this album, Billy Joel Turnstiles. I have a vinyl copy that cost $1.98 back in the day. And you can see it's a Columbia label. And I'm putting that up against what I'll call an OG CD. This is a early mastering, the original mastering on um, from probably from the 80s or early 90s. And then here's the 1998 Ted Jensen remaster. And then I'm also going to pit that against the title stream of Turnstiles, which according to the credits and title is the Mobile Fidelity Mastering by Rob Laverde. And those are the four versions of this album that I would like to, to compare. On the turntable I used, it was the Fluence RT85, my new turntable, which sounds phenomenal. So I was really interested. Once I listened to turnstiles, I thought, let's compare it to the CDs and see what happens. So it'll be fun. All right, let's get down to business. Here are our song candidates, and we'll start with track one. There's only eight songs on this album. Say goodbye to Hollywood. All right, on the Mobile Fidelity title stream, it sounded nice. I thought the opening bass drum intro sounded right. There was nice balanced EQ overall on this version. On the 1998 remaster, it sounded to me like that very first bass drum kick sounds like it's almost still fading up. It doesn't quite have the presence as the other bass drum kicks. And there was a harsh edge to this track that I rather disliked on the remaster, though on the whole in headphones, which is where I did my careful comparisons, uh, it, it was listenable, but there was a harshness. On the original CD, uh, definitely lower volume. It was nicely balanced, perhaps a little thinner and not punchy enough though, but it was a pleasant listen. And then on the vinyl, the opening bass drum kick sounds just right, has that great punch to it, and the drums and bass were fat, and it had a nice uh, stereo spread to it, so it really sounded good on the vinyl. So I am going to give the nod on this one to the vinyl with MoFi coming in a close second. How about Summer Highland Falls? This is one of my favorite Billy Joel ballads. Uh, the Mobile Fidelity title stream had definitely had a vinyl feel to it. The piano approaches the vinyl quality. The drum and bass parts, in the, uh, when they come in, they sounded not bad at all. Uh, there wasn't um, a lot of harshness to the, to the mix. And the, um, the reeds solo, I guess it's either clarinet or saxophone, is, is, ple is pleasant. Um, and I thought that was the best digital version, that very easy to listen to. On the 1998 remaster, um, there was a lot of graininess uh, on this version. Uh, the mid-range frequencies were kind of squashed, mashed up. Something was wonky here. Um, the when the drum and bass come into the song, it's not bad. Um, I felt like I heard the the rim shot part uh, pretty well, maybe better than on the original CD. The vocal cut through nicely, but there's just this overall harshness to the track, a little too aggressive for my taste. On the original CD, the vocal sounded um, a little grainy to me. Um, there's almost some distortion that I detected on the entrance of the drums and bass parts, but overall not bad. I like the bass sound. It's pretty reflective of what you hear on the vinyl. And um, the cymbal crashes like stood out to me nicely, but there was a sort of grittiness or a graininess that I sensed um, that wasn't in the vinyl. As for the vinyl, the piano on Summer Highland Falls, the tonality was beautiful. 
The drums really kicked in nice and full. The bass was distinct and solid. The rim shot sat in the mix properly. The, it's really the pocket is just right. And the vocal did blend in nicely, but I was wondering if it was out front enough on this track. Um, so this one uh, is close. And it's a, it's, a, it's a shootout between the vinyl and the MoFi. Um, I'm going to give, it's really essentially tied, but I'll, let's just give the slight edge to the MoFi. Probably because the vocal sounded a little nicer. Now, how about all you want to do is dance? Um, this is uh, really the one throwaway song on this album. It's one of my favorite Billy Joel albums. But for a throwaway song, it's, it's a good throwaway. Like it's listenable, it's pleasant, it's sort of a spicy song. Uh, on the Mobile Fidelity title stream, um, the, the percussiveness of the instruments was very spicy, like nice wholesome bass, lots of space between the instruments, sounded good. On the 1998 remaster, it was louder than the Mobile Fidelity stream. The bass was very fat, but ultimately um, the harshness kicks in. It was fatiguing to listen to. The original CD was not as harsh as the remaster, uh, but it didn't have the precision of the Mobile Fidelity stream, a softer presentation. And then on the vinyl, uh, the soundstage was phenomenal. And it was noticeable right away on the introductory bars of the song, spatialness, deep, wide, uh, percussive, great combination of instruments. Um, and the mobile fidelity came the closest to the quality of the vinyl, but I'm going to give the edge to the vinyl on All You Want to Do is Dance. Moving on to this saloon ballad, New York State of Mind. Uh, here, let me start with the vinyl and talk a little bit about this. Of all the tracks on turnstiles, I thought New York State of Mind on my vinyl pressing uh, sounded the worst. And I'm not saying it's bad, but it just didn't sound as good as the other tracks on the vinyl. The piano introduction was not as involving as it, I thought it should be. The level seemed lower. Billy's vocal seemed muffled in the mix. There seems to be some problems with this recording. The soundstage isn't as impressive, especially compared to the previous song. And it felt like the strings were like too far in the background, too receded. The bass did sound nice, I'll give it that. But the piano sounded too far back. Uh, the sax, saxophone sounded breathy and nice, good, good presence. Um, the drum hits um, were punchy. And I, do, I feel, though, like there's some issues perhaps with the source recording on this, so however it was produced. Um, there was um, some weird volume shifts as if someone was, like, riding the faders or doing something, something funky with it. As for the original CD, the piano was sounded better on the introduction than the vinyl, better presentation. Uh, by itself, it's superior to the vinyl. So like just when you're hearing the piano part, um, but Billy's vocal wasn't quite as forward as you think it should sound. Um, it does sound more distinct than the vinyl and the balance of instruments is pretty good. The strings still, still feel way back in the mix, but you can hear them more clearly than the vinyl. And the this actually preserves the original saxophone solo by Richie Cantata. That's the way it should be. And we'll get to the remaster and that uh, snafu in just a sec. Let's move on. The 1998 remaster. The, the piano on New York State of Mind is prominent on the introduction, nice and full. It gets off to a good start. But Jesus, they, it sounds like they added extra stereo reverb to Billy's vocal. It sounds actually ridiculous. Um, there was some weird thing happens when the bass comes in strong after the, for for the first chorus. It's crowded. There's this cluster, clustery sound to it. And 
what makes this most disturbing on this presentation is the substitution of a different saxophone played by Phil Woods. And this apparently was done on a Greatest Hits compilation and they just pulled that version into this remaster of Turnstiles. Why would you do that? That is like not faithful to the original spirit of the album. But um, overall, the New York State of Mind on the 1998 remaster, everything's back to being too harsh. And I do not recommend this for a lot of reasons. Now, as for the Mobile Fidelity stream, um, like the original CD, the piano intro sounded much clearer than the vinyl, less veiled. And it's also, I think, better than the original CD. The piano has a nice clarity and ring to it. There's a good stereo spread. Billy's vocal feels more forward now. I mean, he's not really much more out in front, but you can hear it better. Uh, it's like a patina of dirt has been cleaned off this uh, presentation. Strings are still sitting for pretty far back in the mix. I'm just, I'm sure that's just how it was mixed. Uh, but there's a sweetness here that I like. And it's suggested in the original CD, but it's better presented here on the MoFi. And thank God it brings back the original saxophone solo. So my nod here for New York State of Mind is going to be the Mobile Fidelity stream on Tidal. And this, by the way, was a 16-bit 441K uh, uh, FLAC file that I was listening to. Let's go to side two, James. Uh, nice electric piano ballad. And we'll start with the vinyl. This has a light, soft presentation to it. Um, and I did have to bump up the volume a bit uh, compared to the digital presentations. Uh, I really like the sound of the bass guitar. It's very warm. This is just a warm 70s uh, ballad. Vocals felt out front, louder. Uh, there was a nice percussiveness in the electric piano part. Uh, the transients you can hear. And uh, I thought the vocals were quite involving on this one. So that's great. As for the uh, original CD, compared to the remaster, uh, this was superior to the remaster. It's a sweeter presentation, airier, more space around the instruments. By contrast, the 1998 remaster, very clotted, very sclerotic, not good. And then the Mobile Fidelity sounded fuller and louder than the original CD, very uh, breathy and airy. Uh, a nice full spectrum sound. And so once again, like we had up here with, um, so I think it was Summer Highland Falls, this ballad, it's a pretty close call between the mobile fidelity and the vinyl, but I'm going to give the edge to the vinyl. It sounds really nice. How about Prelude, Angry Young Man? Um, well, we'll start with the mobile fidelity on this one. Uh, nice ballsy presentation when everything starts. The piano did border on sounding a little too harsh though, uh, on that very percussive introductory part. Uh, the band sounded loud and clear. I wondered if there was maybe a little too much aggression here, uh, but I did like how you can hear the air around those uh, staccato chords as, he, as the band gets cooking. And uh, I really couldn't decide if I liked this version better than the original CD. Uh, um, it, it definitely punches hard, but it bordered on maybe being a little fatiguing to listen to. And I didn't, I thought the synth solo that comes later in the song wasn't as warmly inviting as is found on the vinyl. Uh, as for the 1998 remaster, uh, when the drums come in, what happened here? I don't know. It gets lost in the mix. It just seems buried. There's very odd, weird volume fluctuations. It's really rather appalling what they did to this. 
Somebody was getting knob happy with this one. The guitar is way too harsh. The mid-range is very clotted, sclerotic. And on the vocal parts, uh, I did notice the organ in the left channel, maybe a little bit more than the other versions. But, you know, you can hear them on the other versions too. Maybe it was just I happened to be paying attention to that. But the presentation overall was like way too harsh, around much harsher than the Mobile Fidelity. As for the vinyl, um, oh, let me go to the original CD. I thought the, the, the piano part here sounded a little too brittle compared to the vinyl, but the drum sounded nice and full. Uh, the presentation was somehow a little flat to me, not as deep as the sound of a sound stage. And this is, I think, something that you hear on early CD versions of albums when, where they, they, they sound a little thinner sometimes. But it's nice and clean and, and it's respectable. Uh, On to the vinyl. Uh, the piano articulation was very fine, precise, very percussive. You could hear all that. The guitar was brash in a good way. The full band really filled the sound stage. Very nice, rounded band mix. The, tran the transients are phenomenal on vinyl. Warm, warm is all hell, but also with like a, this high-end sparkle. Uh, I thought the Ortofon 2M Blue cartridge really shined on this track, uh, and I liked how the synth solo blended with the mix. Everything was in balance. So in my final analysis, the clear advantage goes to vinyl on Prelude, Angry Young Man. Let's go on to uh, really like uh, another nice ballad on this album, I've Loved These Days. Uh, here, the on the Mobile Fidelity presentation, the piano was presented nice and gently, uh, very sweet. It's not as loud as the 98 remaster. That's a good thing. And when the band comes in uh, on the chorus, it sounded like a lot better than the 1998 remaster. Full, warm, balanced. Instruments have their place in the soundstage. It's good. But seeing a pattern here with the 98 remaster, not a fan. Uh, for this one, uh, I thought Billy's vocal sounded too far back in the sound stage. The piano uh, in the mid-range was too harsh, too sclerotic again. The bass and drums are okay, how they sit in the mix. But it feels like there's noise shaping going on here. I don't know what it is. Denoising, noise shaping something's going on that I didn't like. Like it's like there's noise at the fringes of the notes, uh, like a halo, and it's not an angelic halo. As for the original CD, uh, the piano sounded really nice on the introduction part. Sweet, very elegant. Uh, Billy's vocal felt more upfront than the 98 remaster, and maybe even more than the Mobile Fidelity version. Band sounds good. Maybe not as impressive as the Mobile Fidelity version, but good. All in all, respectable. A little flatter again, though. A little thinner and, and also a little grainier than the vinyl. As for the vinyl version, pian piano sounded lovely on the introduction. Billy's vocal was, was warmer. Uh, and when the bass and drums enter uh, and come in force, it really sounds great. Warm balanced, well-blended, punchy, but not too harsh, good transients on the cymbal splashes, Billy's vocals up front, you can hear the reverb tail on several, several of his phrases, and the strings are very sweet on this presentation, nice wide stereo spread, and the piano tone I thought sounded the sweetest on this version. So I am going to give the nod once again to the vinyl. And last but not least, Miami 2017, Seen the Lights Go Out on Broadway. Well, on the Mobile Fidelity stream, uh, the block chords sounded really great, uh, as, was, as also did the piano intro. Um, it was reminiscent of the vinyl presentation, and I thought it was superior to the original CD version. Really nice, uh, uh, just nice overall sound, nice tonality to it. 
Um, I did think the entrance of the band was a little less impressive than you hear on the vinyl version, but once the band is locked in place, it's nice and full, has a great sound stage, the bass is tight, the electric rhythm guitar rips hard. Is it as involving as the vinyl? Maybe not. Um, maybe Billy's vocal is a little bit receded in the sound stage, uh, and it's less so, though, than the original CD. On the original CD, let's go to that one, uh, I didn't think the piano chords on the introduction sounded as good as uh, the vinyl. It was too gritty. Um, the band sounds fine, though. Billy's vocal felt pushed up front more uh, on the loud passages in the song. And the clarity of the CD helped out here. Um, the sound stage didn't strike me as deep and as deep and nor as wide as the vinyl, though. As for the 98 remaster, much less involving than the other presentations. It's something's being futzed with too much here. Billy's vocal is more up front, like you hear on the original CD. That's a plus, and the full band assault is actually pretty impressive once it gets going. But uh, and of all the tracks on uh, on this version, the '98 remaster, I guess this one sounds the best. Um, but the quiet passages are too quiet when the band drops out, so it suffers on that score. A little bit of a missed opportunity there. As for the vinyl, um, surprising how aggressive the presentation sounded on vinyl. It really punches hard and uh, it rocks out. And that's a good thing. Nice big sound stage. Billy's vocals on the verge of being buried amid all that band sound, though. So as for this one, um, I'm actually going to stick with the vinyl because it rocks so hard. It really, I was surprised at how how great it sounded on vinyl. So what can we conclude? Well, I think we have a winner. The vinyl wins out in our shootout. And I would just make a couple last comments on it. So this is like not a fancy pressing, all right? This is just your garden variety. You can probably find these in the used bins for you know a few bucks at most and if you just look for a clean copy of the vinyl I think you're going to be in wonderful shape as for the original CD version this is I would call this respectable it's respectable it's fine nothing really stands out as being awful and again Look for this original version and make sh and so if you're into like CDs, that's probably a good one to get and make sure you don't get this one. This is this will be my advice. This one has the hype sticker. Okay, the 24 bit digitally remastered and you know, the only advantage of this version versus this version is this comes with the lyrics and that's about as much as good as I can say about it. it it's pretty it's pretty awful I, I, I hate to say it but the 98 remaster just doesn't doesn't do it for me now one glaring omission here in this shootout is my understanding is there was another remaster issued when they did the Billy Joel complete albums CD box, which is somewhere around 2011, give or take. And you can, I believe that's out of print, but you can still purchase um, smaller box sets, like five mini LP CD sets uh, under the original album classics banner. And one of those packs in, includes turnstiles. And it's my understanding that that does feature the more recent remastering I have not heard it, so I can't comment on it. 
All I can report is that people uh, on the internet who've reviewed it say it's, it's superior to the 1998 remaster. But having said all that, let's talk about the title version, um, which is the mobile fidelity uh, mastering. It's, it's cool that you get the mobile fidelity version streaming and it clearly sounds different than the other two digital presentations and I think it's excellent. I really do. I think it's excellent. So if vinyl's not your thing, that is the best digital version I've heard. And again, I can't compare it to that other more recent remastering, but other people have said, a lot of people have said that they, they really like the mobile fidelity. And I can see why. It's close to the vinyl. Uh, a lot of these decisions on the songs I went through were, were pretty close calls and they could have been tied. But um, in my final analysis, the vinyl is the overall winner. And the good news is, those of you who stream, at least on Tidal, um, you're getting a really, really fine digital presentation of that album. Like, it sounds excellent. So... I can't, I can't speak for other streaming platforms. Sometimes you can't get as much information in the credits as you can on Tidal. So I do not know which versions they are using. Um, it's up to you to research that and determine it. But um, the other thing I can't review is the SACD version of the Mobile Fidelity or the vinyl version of the Mobile Fidelity for that matter. I just don't have them. Uh, I don't think I need them because I'm really happy with my plain old vanilla vinyl here. And also, I can always go to Tidal for a really, really great uh, digital version of this album. So that's it. Billy Joel, Turnstiles. If you haven't heard it in a while, you're in for a treat. It's really like, I feel always felt like this was the album, even though it didn't sell well initially. It's the album where he started to really find his voice and get traction. And it, it's the prelude to his big smash, The Stranger, which defines the quintessential Billy Joel sound. My three top Billy Joel albums are Turnstiles, The Stranger, and 52nd Street. And they're, you know, depending on how I feel, they're in a different ranking. But Turnstiles is right up there. Uh, at, 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 I think it's representative of his best work. Let me know what you think. Have you heard different versions of Turnstiles? Let us know in the comments. And I hope you like and subscribe. Thanks for listening.